EDA interface A, they mean the exact same thing, uh, two words for the exact same uh, technology, the exact same standard. And I, I wanna walk you through some of the terminology. So EDA is the modern way to collect data. It is not a replacement for SexGem. It lives side by side with SexGem. What it does is it lets SexGem focus on this command and control, I'm gonna keep saying that, while EDA runs to the side and can let you do all of your data collection. So let's just define a couple of the words I'm gonna be using in my presentation and in the demo later, uh, just to understand what's going on here. Uh, easiest, well, we'll start at the bottom of the, uh, the screen here with the tools. I've got all my different tools here. And the tools are known as the EDA servers. They're the ones who are gonna be serving up the data. So on the tool is going to be installed some kind of software uh, that's gonna serve up the data that you're collecting over EDA. Now, each of the tools on there, you can see this, the CEM or Common Equipment Model. Uh, usually we just call it the SEM uh, for short. The Common Equipment Model is a dictionary of the available data that this tool can provide over EDA. One of the challenges with SexGem is that often if you want to get new data, access the data, figure out what's available there, uh, there's no standard easy way to get a list of all the different variables, all the different parameters that are available to you. Uh, typically what you'll have to do is you'll have to find a manual, often it's an Excel spreadsheet or a comma separated file. You, you hope it's up to date, you hope it's the right version, you hope you can find it somewhere and, and look up um, what's in there, what values are available. EDA has solved this problem because part of the standard is that an EDA server can be queried and you can ask the EDA server, what variables do you have? What does this tool look like? And all that information is organized inside the SEM, inside the common equipment model, in a very easy to, uh, format to, to read, to parse, and for your engineers to look at it and build up the data collection that they need. And you'll, you'll, you're gonna see that in the demo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that to you in some depth. Now, once we, ha we have the SEM, so the SEM gives us a list of the available data, we're gonna create a data collection plan. Now the data collection plan, uh, you know, implementation is typically an, an XML file, but the, the data collection plan is going to show you, or sorry, it's gonna specify the variables I want to collect, when I want to collect them, when to start and stop it, and the frequency, how fast do I want to pull this data in? So the data collection plan, for example, um, could specify here's the, the load lock data that I want to collect. And it's going to start when a wafer enters the load lock and it's gonna stop when the wafer is done pumping down. And during that time, I want my roughing pump speed or I want my pump speed, I want my valve status, I want my pressure gauges, uh, what have you. So the data collection plan is gonna specify all of the variables, uh, when I want to collect them and how fast I want to collect them. Once I have those data collection plans loaded uh, onto the tools into the EDA servers, then any EDA consumer, so we're up to the top of the screen now, uh, can actually activate and start requesting data from the tool based on those data collection plans. And the, the beautiful part about EDA, and to get around that, that major constraint of one-to-one, -one, is that you can see here a, a single tool can talk out uh, you know, an EDA connection to, to multiple different listeners, multiple different data consumers or clients, um, and it can also have, you know, one client can listen to an EDA stream from multiple different tools. So you've got all sorts of different options, how you can make these many-to-many -many connections with your EDA streams to pull data off. You're not limited to that single connection. Now, if there's probably a few EDA experts here on the call listening in, and they're going to pick up on the fact that I, I am blending together uh, some terminology from the, there's, there's three generations of EDA. Uh, you may have heard of freeze one, freeze two, and freeze three, if you're really keeping up to speed with the latest and greatest. Uh, I'm cheating a bit here. The details get uh, complicated under the covers. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about that later. Uh, but if we do look at, at EDA and you know the, the more modern versions of it, uh, one of the great things is that we have the ability that the EDA client, uh, you can actually manage and turn on and off these data collection streams uh, independently of who's actually collecting the data. So we do have the ability, depending on how you set up your factory, that you could have a, a single client or management um, software taking a look at all the different EDA streams that are going on around your factory, monitor those, keep an eye on them, um, turn them on and off, uh, see what's going on. So that gives you the ability in a central location to control the data collection, even though the data itself is flowing into all these different packages. 
Um, again, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm waving my hands here and some of the different capabilities uh, can go into to deeper detail um, offline. 